First, intelligence is real. Some people really do have more of it and others less. This much is obvious. However, as for measuring intelligence and expressing that as a simple number, that idea has problems. Perhaps intelligence can't be measured at all. A lot of things can't be. In the likely case that intelligence is one of those things, any attempts to reduce it to a single number would always be naive and simplistic. Whether or not intelligence is measurable, definitely the way we measure it now, at least for adults, is not very good. In this video, we're going to see why and examine some of the problems of intelligence testing. Standard tests attempt to measure intelligence using the intelligence quotient or IQ. This is mental age divided by actual age. So for example, if someone has a mental age of 15, but their actual age is 10, that's 15 divided by 10 or 1.5. And since IQ is expressed as a proportion of 100, or effectively a percentage, we multiply the result by 100. So far, this seems okay, but actually there are problems. One of the first is that each IQ test gives a different score. Some quite different. So the various tests are not directly comparable. This is a problem, but not a serious one. In practice, IQ assessment disregards the actual number and instead considers the percentage bracket that each score represents for each test. This makes the various tests comparable. The other problems are not so easy to get around. They fall into two main categories, problems with the questions and the idea of mental age itself. Standard IQ tests are always multiple choice. These tests explicitly assume one right answer. Yet there may be more than one right answer, and it's not valid to exclude that possibility. At the very least, multiple choice questions should include a further option, none of the above, combined with space for explanations, but they never do. Therefore, th these tests can discriminate against anyone capable of original or higher reasoning. So using multiple choice questions to assess intelligence can be a problem because these tests can discriminate against the most intelligent people. The types of questions that typically appear in IQ tests have been criticized for being biased towards educated classes. For instance, many IQ tests include mathematics problems of the following type. For those who've been taught the appropriate method, in this case, simultaneous equations, such problems are fairly simple and solving them would take a few moments. However, anyone who didn't learn the method at school or who has since forgotten, would have great difficulty solving them. Doing so would require inventing a technique rather than simply applying a known one, which is a completely different level of problem solving. Thus, many IQ test questions may not be a fair test of intelligence, but instead test learning. Extending that, in cases where IQ tests are used to assess admissions applications, applicants sometimes receive special training drilling the standard types of IQ questions. Many even memorize many likely variations on specific problem types. If the questions were a real test of intelligence, training wouldn't make any difference. The fact that this training can make a significant difference further proves the bias problem. Real intelligence can't be learned. It only manifests in novel situations, but currently no test provides that. The calculation of IQ depends on the idea of mental age. That is actually quite robust when applied to very young children. They and babies display a long list of traits corresponding to specific ages. For example, at approximately 24 months, normal toddlers reach the object permanence stage, where they will find a hidden object by looking where they last saw it. Similarly, normal three-year-olds produce expanded noun phrases such as big brown dog. Children hitting these standard markers at younger than average ages will be considered mentally advanced. And in reverse, if they still can't do them when older, their progress will be deemed slow. 
Thus, in these cases, there's a certain validity to expressing mental age as a function of chronological age, because clear markers apply and there is a qualitative difference between adjacent stages. However, the older a child gets, the less distinct these stages are, especially for older teenagers. And for adults, the assumption of mental age breaks down completely. Nevertheless, we apply the same reasoning to adults as we do for little children, assigning them an IQ determined by comparing mental age with chronological age, despite it being virtually impossible to define clear mental ages for adults. For example, a 20-year-old receives an IQ score of 110, meaning they have a mental age of approximately 22. But what are the assessable cognitive differences between 20 and 22? In every real sense, probably none. Probably there is a true difference somewhere between 18 and 25, and older teens are known to have a less developed ability to assess risk. However, in terms of the limited range of abilities IQ tests measure, it would be quite difficult to find any measurable difference between those ages and similarly across the entire adult range. What is the difference in mental capacity between ages 25 and 40? Again, none or none robust enough to define universally. In those cases, if there's no clear cognitive difference between various ages, the whole concept of mental age must be inapplicable to adults. Without clear markers of mental age, you can't calculate IQ. For older adults, it becomes even more absurd because data on which to base these assessments simply don't exist. Consider this real case. A 70-year-old man with a documented IQ somewhere in the top 0.1%, corresponding to a score of at least 150. In theory, this would make his mental age 1.5 times his chronological age, or 105 years. In another 15 years, the same individual, maintaining the same IQ, would supposedly have a mental age of 127. As a measurement, it means nothing. It's total nonsense. But this problem gets worse the higher the intelligence and the older the person. There are developmental stages that separate one stage of adulthood from another. Some 40 or 60 year olds really do have substantially better problem solving capabilities than they did when they were 20. So their intelligence may increase. One problem is we don't know exactly what those stages are, nor when they occur. Also, they are learned. But the biggest problem is they are not universal. Not everyone reaches those stages. Some people stay pretty much the same throughout adulthood, and in that case, problem-solving capacity as a function of mental age would actually go down. The IQ system probably is highly appropriate to very young children, less so for older children. But for older teens and adults, it's completely invalid. Therefore, we have to abandon this idea as a basis for intelligence assessments for those age groups. I don't know what could replace it, but chances are intelligence can't be measured anyway. Creativity, for example, is just as real as intelligence but it too can't be effectively measured beyond the coarsest categories, minimal, average, high. It probably even varies from day to day. We may just have to leave it at that for intelligence too. Do you have any experience or comments about IQ testing? If so, please let me know in the comments. Is there anything you'd like to know more about? Please send me your questions. Thanks for watching.